Hey guys, so today I want to show you pigments, this new synth by Arturia, which is a combination in between wavetable and um, analog synthesis. And it sounds like this. At least that's the default preset, which I happen to really like. And uh, what's happening here already shows quite some, quite some cool features about this synth. For one, um, it combines two different engines. It combines an analog engine and a wavetable engine. If we switch to engine two, we can see the analog part of this. But for both of these, we can choose in which state they're going to be. And then for the wavetable engine, we can see this line going back and forth, which is showing the wavetable morphing, which happens by this position control, which in this preset is being controlled by one of the functions. Now, how you would know that is if you go over here and you click on the plus sign, you can see which modulators are assigned to that control. We can do that with all of the controls. So here, for example, if I click there, I can see that this is being controlled by nothing. That is one way to assigning um, modulation. The other one is to go directly to the source, such as LFO3, and then you can see where it's um, connected to as well and where you can connect it to. So that's that. Another thing we see which is kind of interesting is that this cutoff is in yellow. And the reason for that is that all factory presets, they have these tips enabled. And tips are just highlighted buttons that the sound designer of this preset considered to be interesting to tweak. So with every factory preset, we can choose another one like for example this one, we can see that some knobs are going to be in yellow. That is if the, the tips here is enabled, um, enable sound design tips. So if you click show tips, they, those will show up and they will also show the, the range that is fun to experiment with. They can quickly learn you which aspects of this, uh, this preset are interesting. which is kind of a new approach, so I, I like that. And what you can do is you can also edit these, so you can advance edit tips and then you can edit the range like uh, that, which is something that you could do for your own presets too. If you're, if you're making something, you can come across a knob that you really like the sound of, but you're not sure if you want it in there or not. You can indicate that to be a fun thing to experiment with for when you later revisit that. So let's check out a few more sounds and then I wanna show you a few of the different panels and what we can do there. So this is all showing you things through the regular uh, browser here by clicking on the name. Um, we also have a real browser which allows us to um, find things based on, for example, sequence. thing here is that we can tweak all of these instantly with the macros right here. Finally, let's go with some uh, strings, maybe. Um, so those are some pretty nice sounds. What I, what I hear in here, uh, what I hear in here is that they're the nice combination between analog and, and digital. It has that dusty sort of analog sound that Arturia is known for from their analog model stuff, but it also has an edge of modern digital shininess, I guess. So um, for our examples, let's quickly go to the default wave, which is a sine wave and it loads in engine one and we can see this being set to a, a, a wavetable type. 
and it sounds like you would expect from a sine. Now below here we have four different effects to change this wave. We have frequency modulation, FM, we have phase mod which is very similar, phase distortion which maps the, um, the phase to the amplitude of a target wave and then wave folding which maps the wave to a target wave. So um, let's check out all of these. So there, with just a sine wave, we can quickly create some rich um, different timbres. And then these are being modulated, these uh, controls, by this audio rate modulator, which is just a, a um, it's like an LFO running at very fast speed. So we can choose some different waves there, like a saw. And we can change the tuning. And then here we have the wave tail position knob, which goes in this case from sine to triangle to uh, saw to square. And um, right now, because morph is set to on, it's going to smoothly go in between those. If morph is off, it's going to jump to the new wave. And here at the top, we can choose different waves and we can also import our own waves from audio files. So let's choose additive, for example. Now let's morph this one and let's um, assign an envelope to this. So to do that, um, there's two different ways. In the middle right now, we can see all the modulation sources. What I could do is if I want to control this position knob, I can hover over here, click on the plus sign, and then this changes to show the amount. So now I can set envelope two amount to let's say 0.54, which means that envelope two is gonna control this with that value. And now if I hit a note, we can see that right there. So that's one way we could now go to envelope two and change the decay, for example. A different way of assigning this is to go directly to something like, let's say envelope two right there, and then controlling it from there. So if I remove this assignment right now, uh, if I go to, you can see envelope two is grayed out, then I can click on it and then I can assign it to whatever I want by just hovering over it. So we could assign it to the phase distortion amount and to this wavetail position. And then I'm actually gonna go back to my basic waveforms. And now we could assign a macro to that. So if we go to macro two, we could assign it to the decay here. And then with this macro on the right, we can rename it and we can call it uh, speed which is something that I've seen in these presets a lot where the speed is being mapped to some decay parameter. Um, so that's one thing, and then we have the LFOs here. So let's try to assign LFO2 to the fine tuning. So we can click on LFO2 here and then set it to the fine tuning. We can hold control for small amounts. And now we should hear some subtle pitch detuning. It's not subtle enough for me though, so I'm gonna set the sync to hertz, so that it's gonna run in free mode, and I wanna set it to around five or six hertz, which is vibrato kind of speed, and then I wanna let it fade in over time, so that it's slowly gonna increase the amount. And I also want to dial back that amount a little bit, something like that. So that way we get a little bit of a more vibrato sound. If I slow this down, the sound becomes starts to sound a little bit older or a little bit detuned, like like it was badly re recorded, um, which is kind of kind of a popular sound. Um, so let's actually go to our main envelope, envelope VCA, and change the attack here and the attack curve, and then let's also change the decay curve to make more of a um, more of a slope that you would expect from a pad sound. And then we'll, we'll give that some extra voices, which is gonna copy this signal and then we uh, spread those different voices out and we detune them from each other to get a richer sound.
right now we're only using this wavetable, um, which is sending to filter one. And here for the filters, we have a lot of different options. We have the modeled filters that um, Arturia is famous for, like the SAM filters, the Matrix 12, the Mini, which is a Moog filter. And then we have some more unique, like formants and phasers. But uh, from all of these, you have a lot of different options because each one of them has different modes. So the Matrix 12, for example, has these different modes. And then the uh, Surgeon has these different modes. So there's uh, quite a lot to choose from here. And they all have a nice visual overview. Um, for now, let's go to a regular multi-mode filter. And I'll go with a regular 24 dB low pass. And I'm going to control that with, let's say, one of the functions. I think we haven't used that one. So the functions, I don't know if I mentioned already, but these are multi-segment envelope generators. Um, so they're basically very fancy envelopes and we can let them loop or we can uh, let them run freely or as one shot. So right now they're looping. If I send them to run, and um, they're going to run freely regardless of our play position. And with one, they behave like an envelope. So um, right now that is what I want because I want this to control the filter cutoff. <laughs> Now let's um, take a look at the analog engine here. We can add that and um, we can send that to filter two. So let's just enable this one for now. So right now we have um, these saw waves right here. The cool thing here is that um, these first two oscillators can be controlled by the third oscillator. So if we set the amount here, you can see those first two waves, they change depending on the waveform here, um, which is another type of audio rate synthesis. And then the unison options here have changed to drift options because we're now in analog domain, so we can we can apply some oscillated drift, which means that they're going to be slightly out of tune, which is giving that analog sound. And right now I'm sending this to filter two, so let's um, add another filter here. Let's go with the SEM filter, another low pass, and I think I'll add that same function to here. And we can give that a slower attack. And then we can enable our first engine again. And we can slow this one down a little bit. So here you can already hear that, that analog digital distinction. Now let's go over to the effect page, which is um, quite well featured. We have three different buses, bus A, bus B, and the send bus. And on both of or on each of those buses, we can load three different effects. So right now bus A has a delay and it has a reverb. <laughs> Um, but the options here are quite, um, we have quite a lot. We have three different distortion types, compressor, bit crusher, or actually four different distortions. Uh, some cool options to choose from. Um, but what I really like was that we have a send bus with on the right side here parameters to, for the send and for the return values. So what we could do is we could take, um, for example, envelope three, and we could modulate the send so that only at the beginning of the sound, it's gonna send to this reverb bus. <laughs> We can add some overdrive there to make this a little bit easier to hear. Uh, so th with the combination here, we can come up with very cool, unique sounds. And then here we have also some, some uh, nice routing options. For example, we can send bus B into bus A rather than bus A into bus B. And we can let them run in parallel, meaning that they, um, the, the signal is going into both of the buses with the same amount. And you can see the configuration right now at the bottom left corner. If I click these, you can see how that um, changes to show what we're actually doing. Now, finally, um, we have the sequencer page. And to use that, I'm gonna dial this back a little bit more to uh, regular settings. I'm gonna dial back on my um, delay and on my reverb. And I'm gonna set the faster attack for the envelope so that we can hear the sequence a little bit better. <laughs> So 
So here, this is a pretty standard, although well-featured sequencer. We have these multiple lanes here for the um, the octave, the velocity, the trigger probability, which is kind of cool, which is whether it's going to trigger that note or not, uh, which is like an, an, an yeah, really a probability thing. You can set it to 50% and then it will trigger half of the time. So this, this creates some randomness. We have the gate length, how long the gate is open, and we have slide, which is the, the pitch slide to the next note. The really fun thing here, though, is that we can uh, click on polyrhythm here on the left side, and now we can change each of these lanes individually. So for example, I could give the velocity a uh, three steps, and after three steps, it's going to repeat while the other lanes are still continuing. So this creates an offset. Now to really hear this, we actually need to assign the velocity. So let's go to the um, volume here and let's assign velocity to that. So this is only for this engine. So now if I, for example, um, add a slide here on the second step and I let this repeat every four steps, we're going to hear that difference in overlap. You can hear that slide, it is going to land on a new note every time. Let's set that to five steps. So you can hear that gives you quite complex uh, rhythms with with ease. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of what this synth can do. Um, two things I haven't really talked about are these random functions and the uh, combinate. And the combinate here is um, where you can combine two different modulation sources and use it to affect one destination. And random is three different random algorithms, including the Turing, which can create interesting sort of analog variations to your sound. Um, so with that, I hope that gives you a good enough overview to check this synth out. I really enjoyed uh, messing around with this. If you want to know more, you can always ask questions below. And um, please don't forget to like our channel and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.